Hello and welcome to today's lecture on cache optimization techniques. This is the second lecture on this topic and in the last lecture we have discussed about the reduction of heat time. As you know the average memory access time uh, particularly from cache memory is dependent on three important parameters. Uh, number one is heat time, second is miss rate, third is miss penalty. And uh, to improve the performance, you have to reduce one or more of these parameters. That means, first technique that you can use is to reduce heat time. And in my last lecture, I have discussed in detail various techniques by which the heat time uh, from the cache can be reduced. Because uh, CPU is uh, reading instruction and data and writing also instruction and data in, I mean in, in the from the cache memory, the performance is uh, critically dependent on the performance of the cache memory. That is the reason why it is very important uh, to discuss about various techniques by which the cache memory performance can be improved. So, today we shall focus on the second technique that means re reduction of miss rate, how we can reduce the miss rate and uh, in, the, in my next lecture I shall focus on uh, reduction of miss penalty. And so far as the re uh, for reducing miss rate, you have to uh, use uh, some of the approaches which are listed here. Number one is you can use larger cache size, cache memory size second is higher associativity, third is large block size, fourth is various compiler optimization techniques. So, we shall discuss them one after the other, but before we discuss this technique, let us focus on another very important aspect which will give you necessary background for, uh, for, the, for, for reducing uh, the uh, various other techniques for miss rate and that is an anatomy of cache misses, rather wh why cache misses occur, what are the different types of cache misses that we can call as anatomy of cache misses. So, to be able to reduce miss rate, we should be able to classify misses by their causes, why these misses occur. And based on the causes, the classification can be done into three broad categories. Number one is known as compulsory misses. These compulsory misses uh, is uh, compulsory misses occur because you have to bring blocks into cache for the first time. As you know, uh, when you are turning the power on, the cache memory uh, is not containing any useful instruction or data. So, the cache memory is containing a kind of you may say garbage. So, for the first time you have to transfer instructions uh, to the instruction cache and data to the data cache. So, this, this, is, this, will, this is inevitable and you cannot really avoid compulsory misses and these compulsory misses are also called as cold start misses or first reference misses. That means, first time when you are referring a particular block. Uh, as you know, the uh, the in the cache, cache memory is referred in terms of blocks that miss will occur. So uh, uh, it is quite obvious that this misses will occur even when you have got infinite cache. That means normally we know that if we have an infinite cache, then the uh, the miss rate will be very low. However, this compulsory miss will will definitely occur because for the first time you have to transfer from the main memory to the cache memory. So, uh, this, this will happen. Second is known as capacity misses, cache is not large enough. So, some blocks are discarded and later retrieved. So, uh, this is due to smaller capacity of the caches. So, uh, as we know because of cost, we cannot have very large cache memory. And as a consequence, uh, you have to, you cannot really transfer all the blocks from the main memory to the cache memory. So, you have to uh, take only a subset 
uh, of the blocks from uh, transfer a subset of the blocks from the main memory to the cache memory. And obviously, uh, whenever a particular uh, block in the cache memory is mapped by a large number of blocks of the main memory, uh, quite often you have to uh, I mean replace that cache memory content and uh, put a new block into it. So, uh, this will happen uh, because some blocks are discarded and later retrieved. So, misses occur even uh, in fully associative cache. As we shall see, there are different types of associative you can use and even when we use fully associative cache, then also then, then this will happen. That means, you can place it anywhere uh, in the cache memory. So, it is not fixed and even in this situation, even in this scenario, this, this will occur, capacity misses will occur. Last but not, not the least type of uh, uh, misses is due to conflict misses are known as conflict misses. So, blocks can be discarded and later retrieved if too many blocks map to a set. So, the conflict misses occur because as I mentioned, you are uh, you will be mapping many blocks uh, to a particular set and as a consequence, uh, the you have to uh, replace, bring in and so on. So, these are known as collision misses or interference misses. So, these are the three types of uh, misses that can occur and uh, particularly misses in n way associative. Uh, for example, as you keep on increasing the associativity uh, and for a fixed size case, this, the, this, this factor will change. Later on, we shall discuss about it in more details. Although, uh, I have broadly categorized the uh, misses into three types or the misses can occur because of three reasons. Uh, there is another reason uh, which we may call as fourth C. So, we have considered about three C's, this is the fourth C, this is known as coherence misses. This is caused by cache coherence, later on we shall be discussing about multiprocessor based systems. You have got a, uh, you have got multiple processors having their own private caches and a shared main, shared memory, main memory. So, in such situation another type of uh, misses will occur and that, that is known, uh, known as coherence misses. So, uh, later on we shall, when we shall be discussing about multiprocessor systems, this particular uh, type of miss, misses will be discussed in detail. Now, uh, let us consider the three C's. Uh, or and uh, find let us see what is the miss rate for the different types of misses. As you can see the, the bottom red line very I mean that that is a very small uh, portion here those are compulsory misses. That means, we find that the compulsory misses uh, I mean miss occur because of compulsory misses their rate is much less compared to capacity and conflict misses. That means, compulsory miss uh, is insignific insignificantly smaller compared to capacity and conflict misses. Uh, and this white portion corresponds to uh, the capacity misses, particularly even when you have got uh, fully associative cache, these are the miss rates and obviously, as you increase the cache size, as you can see the miss rate is decreasing and conflict misses are due to different types of associativity. That means, capacity misses are because of uh, the limited size of cache. As you can see, as you increase the size, the miss rate will decrease because of capacity misses. So, however, uh, if you increase the associativity, as you can see, the miss rate decreases. The, the top portion, that blue portion is due to I mean whenever you have got direct mapping. That means, your miss rate is maximum whenever you are using direct miss direct mapping and as you increase the associativity from one way to two way set associative, four way set associative, eight way set associative. Uh, as you can see, the miss rate is gradually decreasing 
as represented by different colors. So, that means the blue portion corresponds to one ways and that uh, set associativity that means direct mapping, the red portion because of two way set associativity and the uh, the, uh, green, um, the yellow one corresponds to four way set associativity and the blue one corresponds to eight way set associativity. And the white portion as I have told even when you have got fully associative cas there will be uh, misses because of capacity misses. Okay. Now, let us focus on uh, how the uh, miss rate decreases I mean changes as you change the size. For example, uh, if you if, if the uh, size of the cache is 2 kb, we find that miss rate is a little more than 0 0.04, 0 0.04 uh, that is the miss rate that means 1 out of uh, that means about 4 percent, 4 percent cache misses occur when you have got uh, 2 kilobyte uh, cache memory. As you increase the size from 2 to 4, uh, as you can see the miss rate is decreasing, it is less than it is little more than uh, 3 percent. So, uh, little more than 4 percent to little uh, little more than 4 percent to little more than 3 percent there is a decrease as you increase the size and thumb rule is as you increase the size uh, if, you, if you make the size double that means 2 kilobyte to 4 kilobyte the, the miss rate decreases by 25 percent this corresponds to I mean the, this, this, this is corresponding to the full associativity. Now, let us consider whenever you have got direct mapping technique in such a case uh, when you have got 2 kilobyte uh, cache memory you can see it is the, uh, the miss rate is little more less than 0.1 that is little less than 10 percent. On the other hand whenever you increase the size to 4 kilobyte uh, then the, the miss rate reduces. Uh, from little less than 10 percent to little more than 6 percent. So, it will be roughly about 7 percent. So, here also 25 reduction in miss rate occurs. Obviously, this reduction question arises uh, due to which miss does it reduce. Uh, this reduction occurs because of capacity misses as I have already uh, mentioned in my earlier uh, with the help of our earlier slides. <coughs> Now, uh, earlier we have seen uh, the different types of uh, miss rates for different uh, reasons compulsory ca capacity and uh, the conflict misses and here the, uh, the, th the miss rate is shown and actually the absolute uh, relative miss rates uh, for different types of misses is shown here. So, we find there bulk of the misses occur because of capacity misses and uh, as I mentioned earlier the compulsory misses which is represented by the red portion you can see the, the, the miss rate uh, because of uh, compulsory misses is, is quite small and, and uh, contrary to reduction in miss rate when the cache memory size increases the compulsory misses increases because you have to transfer larger number of blocks from the main memory to the cache memory. So, the percentage of compulsory misses increases as you increase the size of the cache memory uh, and the capacity miss rate uh, as you can see is uh, remains uh, from 0 to 60 percent. So, this is the capacity miss and, uh, and the, uh, the, the conflict misses vary for different types of uh, different types of associativity one way that is direct mapping two way four way eight way so for different types of associativity the percentage of misses are shown uh, in this particular diagram now uh, we have we can see that the miss rate can be reduced by controlling three parameters cache size associativity and increasing the size of the block. Now, how they affect the three types of uh, misses that means three C's that we shall see in little more detail. So, uh, first let us focus on larger cache sizes. We have seen as we increase the size of the cache memory 
the different types of misses uh, changes. So, uh, how the three types of misses are affected as we increase the size of the cache is, uh, is considered here. So, larger caches are obvious ways to reduce cache, uh, capacity misses. So, capacity misses uh, will uh, reduce uh, as we increase the uh, uh, size of the cache. However, larger caches have higher hit times. So, as we increase the size of the cache memory, the cache memory becomes increasingly complex. Uh, as the increase is becomes increasingly complex, the decoder portion will be quite complex and the delay uh, th for that uh, access uh, will be larger. So, hit time will increase as we increase the size of the cache. So, uh, larger cache size have higher cost obviously, as you as you put more and more cache memory the cost increases. So, these are the factors which, which changes. So, uh, L2 caches have become larger not true for L1 caches. What uh, particularly uh, whenever we consider uh, L1 cache, their hit time is a very important parameter because most of the time data and instructions will be read from the uh, L1 cache. So, there we, uh, we, we try to keep the size uh, quite small, not very large. So, that hit time is very small. However, whenever we go for L2 cache, then size is uh, uh, significantly larger compared to L1 cache. Second important parameter as I told is higher associativity. Higher associativity reduces conflict misses as you have seen in the diagram. Uh, if we go for fully associative uh, cache, then the conflict miss will be minimum and uh, as you uh, and as you in, as you uh, uh, I mean reduce the associativity, go towards direct mapping, the hit rate in hit rate increases. So higher associativity increases hit time. So the reason for that is whenever we go for higher associativity, cache becomes more complex. So direct mapping is the simplest type of cache memory. You can use conventional memory as the cache memory whenever you use direct mapping. But whenever you go, go for two-way set associativity or four-way set associativity or fully associativity, then the cache memory becomes increasingly complex and as a consequence the hit time will increase as we increase the associativity. And another observation that we have seen from the diagram associativity higher than 8 way uh, is likely not useful. We have seen in our previous diagram after 8 way set associativity there is no significant reduction in miss rate if we increase the associativity. So, uh, there is no point in going beyond 8 way set associativity. If we incorporate associativity in the cache memory, 8 way ways, uh, eight ways is the limit. Beyond that it does not, we, re, we reach a point of uh, no return. So, beyond that there is no benefit. That is the reason why uh, the uh, cache, the associativity is restricted to, uh, restricted up to uh, 8 way set associativity. Second observation is then uh, is that there is a 2 to 1 cache uh, 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 thumb rule of thumb. What is that? The miss rate of a direct mapped cache of size n uh, is about the same as two way set associative cache of size uh, n by 2. That means, that me, uh, one parameter is cache memory size, another is associativity. Suppose the, the cache size is n and if it is direct map, say associativity is direct map, or we can say one way set associative, and this will give the same miss rate uh, whenever you have got cache size of n by 2 and you have got two way set associative. So, we find that uh, the we can achieve the 
same goal that means we can have the same miss rate either by uh, increasing the associativity and reducing the cache size or what we can do we can go for direct mapping doubling the size from two way set associativity. So, uh, these are you can say this is a trade off trade off between associativity and cache size for the same miss rate. <coughs> and this particular thumb rule uh, uh, actually holds for caches of 128 kV and obviously, uh, beyond 128 kV uh, we do not uh, I mean consider uh, a cache memory size. So, this particular thumb rule is applicable cause for cache memory for 128 kV and under uh, smaller than that. Okay. Now, let us consider the block size. So, larger block size reduce compulsory misses. So, compulsory misses will be reduced as you increase the block size that is because of uh, spatial locality. We know uh, this, this is governed by the locality of references. Uh, as you increase the block size, larger block size, the adjacent blocks, adjacent words are, uh, are taken from the cache mem main memory to the uh, cache memory. And as a consequence, uh, the uh, next reference whenever the next uh, I mean consecutive address is referred, it will be available in the cache memory. So, that is the reason why increasing the block size uh, compulsory misses reduces because of uh, sp uh, better spatial locality. So, however, larger block size increases miss penalty. Miss penalty increases the reason for that is whenever a cache miss occurs, you, if, it, if you have got if you have got multiple words in the cache memory, then you have to transfer all of them before you can uh, resume execution of a particular instruction by the processor. That means, before the control is transferred to the processor, you have to transfer all the words of a block from the main memory to the cache memory. That means, the uh, that miss penalty uh, increases. However, this uh, this can be uh, this problem uh, can be reduced to a great extent by using critical word first. That means, uh, although we shall be transferring all the words of a block, but the critical word which has been referred by the processor is transferred first. So, the processor can resume its operation only after the critical word is transferred from the main memory to the uh, processor and also to the cache and subsequently other words can be transferred. So, this can be done uh, which we shall discuss uh, in my next lecture where we shall consi consider various techniques for reducing miss penalty. So, this will be one of the technique and larger blocks may increase conflict misses. The you see uh, uh, although it reduces compulsory misses, the conflict conflict misses increases. The reason for that is whenever we consider a cache memory of same size without changing the size of the cache memory, if we increase the associativity, then what happens? Then uh, for a given case, the larger blocks means fewer block uh, block frames. That means, the, uh, the number of uh, suppose for the same size the number of frames is n for direct mapping. If we go for two way set associative although the we have got uh, two, uh, two uh, words in a same block, but the number of frames uh, reduces it will become n by 2. So, as a consequence the uh, the the number of frames reduces and that will lead to increase in conflict misses. So, therefore, there is a trade off the best block size must be chosen carefully. So, you have to since you can see uh, there are conflicting uh, uh, outcomes that means, it reduces compulsory misses, increases miss penalty and also it increases conflict misses. So, you have to very judiciously choose the size of the block. Uh, as it is evident from the uh, diagram. You can see here uh, as you increase the block size, 
miss rate initially decreases, but uh, ultimately after reaching a minimum value, it again increases. That means, particularly when the size of the cache memory is small, then we, we should use a relatively smaller black, uh, block size. In other words, the block size uh, should never be comparable to the size of the cache memory. So, when the size of the cache memory is large as you can see, and then uh, even if we increase the block size, it does not affect much. That means, when the size of the cache memory is small, uh, it is uh, affected more uh, if we increase the size of the block. But whenever we have got a large cache memory, by increasing size of the block, it has uh, it will it does not affect much. I mean, the miss miss rate is not affected much. So, what we can say that uh, the trade off is based on the available size of cache memory, you have to decide about the uh, size of the block. So, this is a simple I mean case study, uh, a real life processor, intrinsity fast mat processor that is that is an embedded microprocessor that is that uses MIPS architecture and this particular processor is used in many embedded application. Uh, it has got 12 stage pipeline, 16 KB kilobyte cache memory, uh, each of 4 kilo words. I mean 4 uh, that 16 KB cache means uh, 4 kilo words and 16 word blocks. So, you can see here you have got a uh, that the block size is quite large because each block is containing 16 words and these are the different components. I mean uh, this is the address 32 bit address which is divided into different parts you can see. Okay. Now, we shall focus on uh, various compiler optimization techniques. So, ways in which code can be modified have fewer misses. That means, uh, so far what we have discussed those are uh, those are to be implemented in hardware and uh, programmers or compiler writers are not bothered about that. Either you will increase the size of the cache or you will increase the associativity or increase the size of the uh, block. So, all these things are related to change in hardware and the programmers are very happy with that. But now, we shall discuss some techniques uh, which are uh, which are depend, which are actually based on optimization of the compiler, and this optimization can be either be done by the compiler or by the user themselves. And McFarling uh, re reported back in 1989 that 15, 50 percent reduction in cache misses using 2 kilobyte cache can take place by using compiler optimization and 75 percent reduction in cache misses can occur on 8 kilobyte direct map cache by using by adopting compiler optimization techniques. Essentially what they do, what is being done reorder instructions so as to reduce conflict misses. So, primarily by reducing the uh, conflict misses because size has been kept fixed simply by reordering the conflict misses are reduced uh, and, and that leads to uh, reduction in I mean miss rate. So, we shall discuss uh, several techniques compiler optimization techniques. First one, okay, these are the most popular techniques. Uh, number one is merging arrays. We shall see how we can merge more than one arrays into one and that will improve spatial locality. Uh, by simple array of compound elements versus two separate arrays that we shall discuss in detail. Second is loop interchange by changing nesting of loops to access data. So, uh, there will be no change in the uh, number of instructions to be executed simply by changing the order of the uh, nesting of loops uh, we will be able to reduce the, uh, the misses and essentially that will uh, increase the uh, reduce the conflict misses. Then third technique is known as loop fusion. So, uh, you may be having uh, two independent loops that have the same looping and same variable overlap. So, the key, uh, key, uh, key parameter is that you are using 
some variables which are common in two different loops. So, instead of accessing separately in two different loops, you can have a same one loop and those, uh, those once the variable is transferred from the cache memory to main memory to the cache memory, they will be used for uh, both the loops. So, that is known as loop fusion. The last technique is known as blocking, which improves temporal locality by, in, by accessing blocks of data repeatedly versus processing the whole columns or rows, particularly for processing arrays, this will be very important. So, these techniques we shall discuss one after the other. So, this is the uh, first technique, merging arrays. Uh, you, you can see here, we have got two different uh, arrays. First one is uh, two sequential arrays, one is two sequential arrays so one is your int pal this is the size of the arrays given here and another is another uh, array that is your key So, these two are, uh, uh, these two arrays are accessed separately and you can see the order in which the way the it is accessed. First, you are accessing the val, array val and then you are accessing key, one after the other. However, after merging, uh, having a, a one array structure, Uh, what you can do, you can struct merge int val and then int key So, in this particular case, what will be done? Uh, you will be accessing an element of val, then element of key, an element of val, element of key. In this way, you will be accessing and as a consequence, what will happen uh, the, 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 by doing this, the, uh, the miss rate will decrease uh, because the way it is done. So, it uh, reduces potential conflicts between val and key and because it improves spatial locality. So, because of the improvement in spatial locality, uh, this will give you better result and uh, the way you will be uh, this way, you know that you will be storing in this way and then uh, accessing in this manner and, uh, and then that will improve the performance because it improves spatial locality. Second technique that we shall be using is known as loop interchange. Uh, in case of loop interchange, you have got 2 D array initialization So, int a 200 elements 200. So, it is a two dimensional array and uh, for then you are accessing in this manner for i is equal to 0, j less than 200, j plus plus and for j is equal to 0, j here it is i, i j less than 200 and j plus plus. So, then you are writing into it a i j and is equal to 2. So, here what it will be done? 
uh, you will be uh, in this case first you are uh, reading a value taking a value of i and you are increasing the value of j from 0 to 200 and you are writing into it. So, that means, uh, the way it is done uh, is uh, for 1 uh, i you are accessing all the elements of j and then you are taking another element of i all accessing all the elements of j. So, this is this is one way of doing it and alternatively what can be done instead of doing this uh, you can do it this way int a 200 200 you will, you will simply change the order for uh, for j earlier it was i for uh, here it is j is equal to 0 j is less than 200 uh, j plus plus and then for simply you have changed the order say here it is i is equal to 0 i uh, less than 200 i plus plus and then a i j is equal to 2. So, in this case what you have done you have simply the earlier j was nested in i now i is nested in j. So, because of this uh, you know uh, there will be lot of changes uh, question arises which one will give you better result actually to answer this one must understand the memory layout of the 2 d array the way it is stored in the memory uh, because your memory is one dimensional you are accessing a two dimensional array and that is stored in a one dimensional memory. As you know memory is organized in the linear way and that is accessed by the address. So, uh, uh, what you can do uh, it reduces misses by improving spatial locality whenever you change the order and improves cache performance without affecting the number of instructions executed. So, the number of instructions executed will will be uh, will be uh, uh, independent of uh, what way you do. So, that means, in both the cases number of instructions to be executed is same, but uh, the way it is stored uh, the uh, I mean the way you, uh, it is stored here because the array corresponding to that ith you know i is in i 2 uh, increasing from 0 to 200 and in fact it has been stored sequ sequentially corresponding to i and as a consequence this will give you uh, better spatial locality. That means, the second option will give you better option better uh, reductions that means, the, the, the elements of 2 d array are stored in contiguous memory cells. The problem is that as I told uh, in computer memory is in 1 d way. So, therefore, there is a there must be a mapping from 2 d to 1 d. So, from 2 d abstraction to 1 d implementation uh, is taking place and as a consequence the this particular approach uh, will give you better uh, result. Uh, you must understand the way the uh, rows and col the way they are stored in the memory. So, you have got a two dimensional array here it is i and j and here you have got different elements of a i j. So, these are the rows and these are the columns. So, uh, here it is a say 0 and, and this is the a 0 0 then here the row changes. So, 1 j is equal to 0 and so on and a n minus 1 j is, j is your 0. So, first first row uh, the first row and different columns and in this direction you have got different columns. Now, uh, the way they can be stored is one is known as row major, second is known as column major. That means, if the rows are stored contiguously, if the row elements are stored contiguously in this manner, 
then it is called rho major. On the other hand, if they are if you uh, store in this manner this element, then the next elements of the column, then it is called column measure. So, uh, and you can see the column measures are stored contiguously first column, then second column, then third column, then fourth column. This is column measure and this is row measure. And uh, actually, uh, the C programs that, uh, that C uses row measure. That means, you are storing in terms of rows. First, you are storing this row, then this row, then this row, and this row. As you can see, rows in memory, as you increasing the address, different row elements are there, and these are the different memory lines in of the cache memory. So, uh, matrix elements are stored in contiguous memory lines, and they are uh, stored in a row measure way. And as a consequence, whenever you try to access them uh, in the in the row by row and in terms of row elements with the help of uh, this program, then you get good result. On the other hand, if the if it is stored uh, in a different way, that means uh, then then it's column measure way, then uh, this program will not give you good result. As you can see, uh, there will be uh, that locality of reference, that special locality is lost since they are stored in row way and you are accessing in terms of column and as a result, uh, this will be, this will give you worse result. So, the locality of reference or special locality will be much less as a result, there will be many misses that will occur in this case compared to uh, the first, uh, first case, where you are accessing row by row and um, elements are sto stored in the row measure manner. Another technique is known as loop interchange. So, here what has been done, you can see uh, you have got this is this is the your array k is equal to 0 to 100 and here j is equal to uh, 0 to 100 and i is equal to 0 to 5000. That means, you are accessing different elements of uh, x i z when writing into it and doing multiplying with your uh, multiplying with 2, then you are storing it here. Now, if you interchange i and j, so uh, if you interchange i and j uh, and then say for uh, out, outer one remaining same that k is equal to 0 to 100 and here it is i is equal to 0 to 5000 and and lower it is i j is equal to 0 to 100 and x i j is equal to 2 into 2000. So, the sequential accesses instead of striding through memory every 100 words. So, the f this will give you sequential access of the uh, for different elements of the array uh, instead of striding through memory every 100 words. Though, so, in this case you will be striding through 100 every 100 words, but in the second case you will be accessing sequentially and this will give you improved special locality. So, if you perform this loop interchange, uh, this the second option will give you better result uh, because of improved special locality compared to the first one. So, this is the loop interchange example. Then third is your loop fusion example. So, in this case separate sections of code that access the same arrays with the same loops performing different computations on the common data. As I mentioned earlier, here you are having two different loops, one uh, here the first loop is, let me write down the two different loops. So, first one is for i is equal to 0, uh, i less than n i is equal to i plus 1 and for j is equal to 0, j less than n, j is equal to j plus 1 and a i j is equal to 1 by b i j into c i 
g. So, this is the operation you are doing and you are performing in this manner and in this, this is uh, and another loop you have got for uh, i is equal to 0 i less than n i is equal to i plus 1 and for j is equal to uh, 0 j less than n uh, j is equal to i plus 1 and you are performing d i j d i j is equal to a i j plus c i j. So, you can see uh, you are performing two different computations one is uh, you are uh, this computation where a i that elements of a is being accessed elements of b is being accessed elements of c is being accessed and you are performing this computation and here is another computation where you are you are computing i mean d i j and also you are accessing uh, different elements of a and c so we find that elements of a and c which you are accessing are overlapping although you are performing two different computation in two different loops uh, instead of uh, doing it uh, having in two different loops, what you can do? You can merge the uh, uh, merge it into a you can uh, have a single loop. For example, for i uh, is equal to 0, i less than n, i is equal to i plus 1 and uh, then you have got another j is equal to 0, uh, j is less than n, i is equal to, uh, j is equal to j plus 1 <coughs> and you are performing a i j is equal to 1 by same thing which you have done earlier 1 by a b i j into c i j and also you will do this computation d i j is equal to a i j plus c i j. So, so here uh, instead of doing it in two, two different loops you are performing in a single loop. So, as a consequence you are you are you are performing uh, loop fusion and by doing this loop fusion uh, you will be having a better result because two misses per access whenever you access them separately versus for uh, two A and C that means you are accessing A and C which are common instead of two misses only one miss per access will occur uh, whenever you do uh, by using this loop fusion. So, these two misses per access uh, will be reduced to one misses per access uh, because of improved temporal locality as you know in temporal locality you are uh, you are accessing something you are retaining something which will be needed in near future in fact that is what is happening in these two cases so for processing this uh, this particular first computation and second computation you are accessing once transferring to the cache memory and reusing uh, twice so this will improve temporal locality and give you better result then the final technique that we shall discuss is known as blocking. So, uh, whenever you are performing dense multi, multi, uh, matrix multiplication, this is the code uh, which you have which you will be writing. So, i is equal to 0 uh, uh, colon i less than n, i is equal to i plus 1 for j is equal to 0 to j less than 1, i j is equal to 1, r is equal to 0 uh, for and you will be doing this computation uh, for, for k 0 to k less than 1, k 
k is equal to k plus 1 and then r is equal to r plus uh, y uh, i k i, I k into z k j and also you will be doing x i j is equal to r. So, this you will do and whenever you do this as you can see you have got two inner loops and you are reading all n by n elements of z reading all and all elements of z uh, and read n elements of one row of y repeatedly. So, this will be doing repeatedly uh, the because these are in inner loop and write n elements and instead of doing that that means instead of uh, reading the entire rows entire entire col rows and entire columns what you can do you can compute on b by b sub matrix uh, that fits into the cache memory so in this particular case uh, it will not fit into the cache memory that means entire all the elements of row uh, and all the uh, elements of column will not fit and as a consequence you will be having lot of misses. So, instead of doing it this way you will be dividing into blocks so of smaller sizes as it is shown here uh, smaller blocks and the, the way it is, it is happening is shown in this particular diagram. So, here as you can see uh, when uh, you are doing without blocking. So, when without doing whenever you are computing this is the x array, this is y array and this is the z array and the way they are accessed is shown uh, with the help of this diagram that white portion is not yet not yet touched uh, then the light uh, portion are correspond to older axis and the dark portion is the newer axis this portion. That means, uh, you can see the older accesses. Uh, have taken place, but using only a small portion here. Similarly, for the for uh, for array y, again you are accessing you are using only a small portion, and uh, this is the older axis. Similarly, for z, you can see a large portion uh, has been uh, is corresponding to older axis, and this is the uh, the the dark portion corresponding to the newer axis. Instead of doing this, if you use the blocking and by changing the code here as you can see uh, you, have, you have used a blocking factor b called the blocking factor divided into blocks. So, instead of uh, doing the computation of the entire arrays entire rows and columns you are doing block by block and uh, this, this, this is how the different uh, I mean the different access of array is done is shown with the help of uh, different loops and the uh, capacity misses because of this blocking the capacity misses reduces from 2 to the power 2 into n, n, n to the power cube plus n square 2 n cube by b plus 2 n square. So, you can see you are uh, by having uh, the uh, large number of blocks and you are dividing n cube by b and that will reduce the uh, capacity misses significantly because uh, you know that you are transferring in only a small block a small block instead of transferring the entire rows and columns and as a consequence your performance your capacity miss will be much smaller and this exploits a combination of spatial and temporal locality because computation is not really in does not involve uh, simultaneously the entire arrays it is computation is done uh, over a small portion of the array by exploiting that idea uh, you are using exploiting the combination of spatial and temporal locality to achieve this uh, blocking and this can also be used to help register allocation and this is after doing the blocking how it is done is shown here in this particular case as you can see uh, in contrast to the previous figure smaller number of elements are accessed earlier you were accessing more number of elements smaller number of elements access accessed for array x for array y and also for array z and you are doing the computation over this uh, area only so one block then we will go to another block in this way block by block 
you will do the computation and uh, performance will be imp will improve. The total number of computation will not change uh, in this case, however, the performance will definitely improve. Okay. So, uh, with this we have come to the end of today's lecture, we have discussed various techniques for reducing the miss rate and uh, we have seen how we can use hardware uh, by increasing the uh, cache size, by increasing the associativity and also by increasing the uh, block size, we can reduce the miss rate and also we can use various compiler optimization techniques that we have discussed briefly uh, in this lecture, which can be used to reduce the miss rate. So, uh, in my next lecture, I shall discuss about the reduction of miss penalty, because that is the third important parameter which dictates the performance of the cache access. Thank you.